Hi friends, my name is Mackenzie, also known as M to the Third. I'm a knitter, dyer, and illustrator, and this is my little knitting podcast um, where I do talk about knitting. I also talk a little bit about illustrations and dyeing and uh, share some of my recent projects with you. Um, if there's a faint whir in the background and some movement from my palm here, um, it's because it is very hot in Portland again, so I've got my fan on. Um, it didn't seem to make too much noise last time, so hopefully um, we can all be okay with that. I've definitely got some finished objects to show you, some little little things that I'm excited to show you and talk about a new cast on and some progress on my whips. Um, it is another heat advisory like over a hundred degrees for the next three days in Portland, Oregon. So um, that doesn't mean I'm not knitting, but it's definitely like, you know, it's hot. <laughs> so yeah, I'm definitely kind of feeling like ready for fall, um, but I'm also enjoying, you know, the last bit of summer and, you know, going swimming over the weekend um, to cool off, enjoying like the bounty of food that we, you know, have access to. And yeah, you know, that's kind of what's going on. So during the last episode, I talked a little bit about beginning to include more affiliate links, um, you know, taking on illustration commissions and blah, blah, blah. So I appreciate all of you who, you know, were like, yeah, you got it. Like, here's some other ideas. And uh, yeah, that was really, I really appreciate uh, you being here for me. So from now on, I'm going to do a little segment at the beginning that's just going to talk about new things that are in the shop, you know, stuff that's going on. Um, I will put a timestamp, so if you are not interested in watching it, um, you don't have to. And uh, yeah, just know that I really appreciate you being here, like being part of my community, which I really do feel like um, it is a community. And if you want a way to engage even more, we have a Slack channel where um, we host knit nights two to three times uh, a month. Right now they are virtual. Um, it looks like they're going to stay that way for, you know, undetermined amount of time. Um, or I don't, at this point, because there's people from so all over the country and to an extent all over the world, I think they are going to stay virtual. I think it's really cool that we get to connect, you know, and kind of get to know one another that way. So if you're interested in virtual knit nights, especially right now, as we're all kind of holding up once again, um, definitely click the link down below to sign up for the Slack channel. And uh, yeah, it's just really fun. We get to share projects, get to share book recommendations, all sorts of stuff. So we'd love to have you there. Um, and go ahead and follow that link if you're interested. Um, so, I've got a couple of things that I wanted to show you that I have been working on. So, number one is last, or earlier this year, I guess, time, doesn't matter anymore, um, I illustrated this little pattern um, that I called the Botanica pattern, and it's all of our favorite natural dye plants, um, and I made the illustration, printed it onto some fabric, and then my yaya, my grandma, helped me make some project bags. So there are five colorways. I will put a picture here on the screen. And um, they are available right now on my website for pre-order. It did say that they the pre-order was ending, but I decided because I hadn't gotten a chance to talk about it on uh, YouTube that I will... Uh, leave it up for another week. And so they're fully lined. They look really nice. They've got a little M to the third button on them. This is wax canvas down here, coordinating top. They're super cute little project bags. Um, I find them perfect for like little shawls or like a pair of socks. And then you can either fold them down 
I put like a fusible fleece so that they stand up really nicely on their own um, and use it kind of as a yarn bucket or um, you know just leave it up and then you can kind of cinch it and take it with you so I've made um, you know a couple of runs of these and I am printing a new fabric so those will be up probably um, later this month at some point um, and I'm using this illustration that I really love that I designed that's called infinite and so I also have some products featuring that design so I really wanted a look how cute and you can get some of these notebooks on my website so I really wanted a design that was like a diverse number of knitters that were like knitting and like some of them were knitting like a hat that was on someone else's heads head and like someone's knitting like the sleeve of a sweater that someone is knitting and like I understand it's impractical but <laughs> you know I just kind of wanted to show the way that the community is interconnected and shows up for one another and I'm really happy with how cute it is and how all the designs came out. And so I have a couple types of notebooks. This is like a hardbound notebook. Um, and then this is spiral bound. They're all lined, lined pages. So if you need somewhere to keep your knitting notes, project notes, I think that these are super cute. And then I also made <laughs> Look at this little tumbler. So a little coffee mug, travel coffee mug. So if you, I know we all have like a million of these, but if you need one that's like super nitty, you know where to find them. So there will be a link down below for those on my website. Um, I also have some journals featuring the botanical illustration, some mugs featuring my sheep activities illustration, so there's a lot of good stuff on my website and Etsy right now, and uh, you can definitely follow the link down below if you want to snag one for yourself. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff listed on my website if you would like to go browse, and um, then let's get the knitting portion all set. So right after we arrived, um, I recorded a quick episode and then Kay and I took off again in the car to Southern California which is where we're both from um, because my mom was having a surgery which went super well she recovered really well and she's still yeah it's been going good um, so we went to help her with that and you know spent some time with my grandma who we hadn't you know I hadn't seen anyone aside from my mom who went on the road trip with us for you know 18 months so it was so nice to see my grandma see my aunt spend time with my sister and um, yeah just kind of relax even though I was working but you know we um, were down there for just over a week and we were very happy to get back home and like really settle in and um, then all of a sudden my nibbling who we I've been talking about I've been sharing a lot of baby knits that I've been making um, she was born on July 29th and she was born a month early so she's itty bitty still very small and um, you know a lot of the stuff that I made and and that they had was not newborn because everyone tells you not to buy newborn sized things because they're you know they'll grow out of it so quickly um, but because of that and because obviously they weren't anticipating that she would be born so early um, she was like drowning in all of the clothes that she had. Um, here's her in a little tiny sweater that I knit that looks so big on her. <laughs> um, so after we had FaceTimed with her after they'd been home from the hospital and had a few days, I was like, okay, well, baby um, Natalie, that's her name. Baby Natalie absolutely needs some preemie clothes and Aunt Mackenzie, Thea Mackenzie is going to do it. So um, I knit a couple of things for her including this little teeny tiny set 
Look at that. And then this little hat. <laughs> I'll put all the links to the patterns. I don't remember off the top of my head what these are called, but there's not a lot of preemie knitting patterns, which I think makes total sense. Um, so this was one of the few that I found. It was pretty easy to knit. Um, I put some buttons that are very, very well enforced on here. And then there's another button in here so that, you know, it stays closed. The pattern calls to do a snap there, but um, I didn't have any and I don't want to go get any. So got the button there and then the two over here. And it's this pretty easy little you know, stitch pattern that makes it look a little more interesting. And um, the yarn that I used is Malabrigo Rios, which is a super wash, merino wool, it's very soft. Obviously they can throw it in the washing machine. And uh, this color is Frank Ochre, which I love. So, yeah, that's one. And then the second thing is this little tiny onesie. How cute is this? So again, this is um, Malabrigo Rios in Hollyhock. And it's like just this like almost electric magenta. So this was super easy to knit. While this was on like a size four needle, oh my God, and I match it. Um, this is on a size eight. So, um, ooh, got, got a little stitch caught there. So you basically do this side and then this side, join it, knit in the round, and then do the front and the back. And it just flew off my needles. Um, I think it's so cute. So these are just some buttons I had around, but these top buttons are, um, from Hello Yarn. Look how cute those are, the little faces. So, a little end sticking out, but Natalie won't care, so. Um, yeah, it's super cute, and hopefully it'll just give her something to fit her over the next, like, couple weeks until she grows out of them. Um, no, I think they'll last a little bit longer than that. That's the nice thing about knit stuff, right? That it stretches out. So, I've got those two, and now that I have filmed this to show you them. I will be mailing them off um, priority and it'll probably get to them in a, a day or two. And so um, my mom and grandma, so this is my brother-in-law's kiddo who was just born, but really like the first the first of this like new generation, which is pretty cool. Um, but so this is, she's like, you know, we're related by marriage, right? So I'm only saying this because my mom and grandma, who, so they, you know, it's just Kay's nibbling. Yeah, sorry. But my mom and grandma were both like, she doesn't have any clothes. She needs newborn clothes. And my mom went ham at Target so cute and then my grandma ended up making her this whole outfit too which I will put a little clip of here so she made that blanket that little set and she crocheted some shoes <laughs> so I was like I'm sorry that me and my family are like this but we love babies and uh so here all the newborn stuff that's gonna fit her for you know a couple of weeks so yeah it's it feels really special um, to be part of her and I just keep kind of like weeping because it's so nice <laughs> so anyway yeah it's it feels like a really special like moment to be a tia for the first time uh, to watch Kay you know be a tio for the first time just to see uh, Natalie's parents kind of yeah just like be enamored with her and just the excitement that the whole family is feeling. So yeah, it's really nice. Um, yeah, yeah. So aside from the baby stuff that I whipped up 
in the last couple of days. I also um, have been taking stock of my socks that are hose at the moment. And that's not me. I would never use ho derogatorily. Um, but ho, if you don't know, is a half object. So like a half finished object. So I've got, I'm like ho ho hoing over here. Uh, and I've got these two right now. Um, this one I did while I was in Southern California. So this was a yarn. Uh, this is actually a commercial yarn that I wanted to try. It is, it's Patton's Sock Croy. And this colorway, I saw another podcaster use, I can't even remember, uh, the early November. Hold, please. Okay, so I saw um, the November Woods Fiber podcast knitting a different colorway um, in this yarn. And I was like, I really liked the colorway. Um, so I got some of that specific colorway, but I also found this one that's called Copper that I really liked. And I wanted to try the yarn. And uh, it's really, like compared to the yarn that most indie dyers are dying on that has nylon in it, which can be a four ply, a two ply, sometimes a three ply, um, but it's very thin yarn. So like this back here. Um, and so, yeah, it's just thinner. So this is a four ply, um, and all of the strands are different colors, which is how you get that like gradation. Um, but it's very th like thick. It's thicker than most finger, like, whatever, the most commercially dyed fingering weights, but it's also just dense. So like, there's like more fiber in it, there's more nylon. Um, and I knew I wanted to use all of the skein, like I didn't want any leftover. So um, I decided to do a toe up sock and I did my toe increases and then I did a three by one rib along the top. I did a, um, Fish, fish lips kiss heel fish lips heel whatever and then continued doing the three by one ribbing and then switched it to one by one ribbing and I didn't think it would end up being like that I had that much yarn left but I did so yeah it's a pretty hardy sock um oh and I also did 72 stitches instead of 64 because of how dense it was I just didn't feel like 64 would fit my foot well and this fits my foot very well so I have this and I'm actually almost to the heel on the second one so they're gonna like coordinate but they don't exactly match just like the nature of the um, yarn but yeah I thought it was an interesting kind of experiment for me um, to try this like very you know, commercial with nylon sock yarn, but because it's so thick, I find it comfortable to wear. Sometimes I don't when the yarn is too thick, but I still need knit them on US1 needles. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how it's gonna wear. I knit K a pair of socks in Barocco socks, like the, I think the first pair that I ever knit for them. And I swear to God that yarn is like bulletproof. <laughs> it's just, there's no holes in it. They look like the same as I did the day after I knit them. Um, so yeah, I am curious to see how this holds up, but I suspect it'll be similar where it just kind of lasts forever. Um, yeah, and I also, I, I don't know that it's super wash. Um, I'll have to check on that and I'll insert the answer right here, but it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel like super wash to me. It doesn't feel the same. So yeah, I guess we'll see. 
So yeah, and then I have this sock, which you probably saw a while ago that I just forgot about. So I'm going to have to finish that. And this is with um, a yarn dyer who was like local-ish to me in New England. She gets all of her yarn from breed-specific farms in Maine, has it spun up with nylon. This one has Firestar nylon in it and then dyes it. And so this was like a sock set and I'm pretty sure I'm actually going to get three more socks like this out of the three, out of like the mini set that I bought from her. So um, yeah, I'm excited to finish those, but I was like, oh, I, 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 it's very rare that I don't finish a pair of socks before moving on to the next one. And I don't remember why I only did one of these because I was enjoying it. I don't remember. Um, so anyway, I was just sort of made aware that I have all of these socks that are left half done, which is very unusual for me. So, um, and then the last episode I talked about starting, 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 uh, the Waiting for Rain shawl with Maria of Woolen Forest. And um, that, of course, I'm in the middle of a row. Well, yeah, it's just gonna have to. So um, I did knit a few more rows past the um, lace, the first lace section. So you can see it. I've been like a little worried and I talked about this in that episode that I should have used smaller needles. And I still think I probably should have, <laughs> but um, I was knitting on it when I did the knit night with my slack channel and you know I was kind of talking about it with them and they were like oh like you can see it and I think once you block it like you know you kind of futz with it and I also mentioned in that last episode I think two things will happen when I block it one is that the yarn will bloom and two is that I um, might be able to like felt it with hot water so that it kind of like so anyway I did not block it since then I didn't want to deal but I'm knitting on it slowly but surely um, yeah so that's what's that's what's happening there um, and then the last thing so I was feeling, and I have been feeling, and I think it might be the heat, moving, sort of getting my business set up now that I'm here. I've just been feeling kind of like uninspired. Um, and I've, I've definitely talked about this before. Like if you go far enough back, I talk about kind of like the ebbs and the flows of making. And uh, it's pretty typical for me during the summer to, to have a little bit of a slope. Um, and the other thing is that I have started thinking a lot about wardrobe and wear, wearability, essentially. And it's not that I won't wear very elaborate knit things. But, just like an everyday cardigan that I want to throw on, makes more sense for me to put in the time to knit in my head. Um, so I was working on the, I still am, it's resting at the moment, but I've been working on the Isolde, just like crew neck cardigan pattern, the stock bridge, and you know, it's not super exciting to share here, but I know that once it's done, I'm going to wear the heck out of it. Um, so that's kind of similar for, like, I, I feel a little bit of like, I don't even know, uh, because I like knit partially to share with y'all who watch the podcast, I'm like, this is like getting boring, right? Because I'm doing 
like, I don't know, just like very wearable pieces, but it's not a very elaborate knit. Um, but you know, I, I think the point is to make stuff that I am going to wear. And so I was thinking, like, because I was feeling uninspired, I was trying to figure out, like, what would actually, like, encourage me to, you know, pick up my needles and feel like I can't put it down, um, even if it was just stuck in it or, you know, whatever. And I want it, I've been wanting to make, like, just little tops, um, especially now that I'm in Oregon and it's going to be wet more than like cold like Boston was and I'm just like a warm person in general so like I don't tend to wear a lot of long sleeve sweaters you know I did in Boston because it was really effing cold but now that it's not I'm not sure what it's going to be like so um I was kind of looking at um you know, the stuff that I, like patterns that I had already purchased, stuff that was in my library. And I decided I wanted to make the Ripple Crop Top by Jessie May. And to be honest, it, I'm not sure that I, I'm like a little like iffy on the fit of it because I know it's, it's oversized and it's drop shoulder. Um, and there are cases when I like that and cases when I don't, and yeah, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how it's gonna go for me. <laughs> but, um, you know, I am, like, I envision being able to wear it with stuff. Um, I have some outfits where I was like, I want a top and I could envision it. And so I wanted to knit it in something that was, um, sort of like, I don't know if neutral is the right word, but I was kind of thinking of doing it in like a black yarn. That whole top is three by three rib. So <laughs> uh, black yarn when you can't, you know, when it's not super bright outside, it's a pain in the ass to knit with. I don't care how good your eyes are. Um, so I sort of started doing I sort of started looking at my stash and I really didn't have the kind of like color that I was looking for and so I decided that maybe the way to motivate myself would be to buy some new yarn. If my dye studio was set up I think I would have gone down there first and dyed something up but it's not. So um, I had been eyeing this yarn for a while on the Tolt website which is now a yarn store that's essentially local to me. It's in Washington. And uh, it's Birch Hollow Fibers. And so this color is like taupe gray, and then there's like hints of magenta and like green. And I was like, you know what? I think that's what will motivate me. Some beautiful yarn that I see clearly as having like a place in my wardrobe even if the even if the actual process of knitting it isn't like super exciting. Um, so I did that and um, woo. and I'm not very far because it's on fingering weight but I think it is gonna I don't know, I just hope it feels, like I have been enjoying knitting it, especially after I finish the baby stuff, and uh, I think it's gonna, you know, kind of fill that, whatever this like lack of motivation and lack of like inspiration, um, I've definitely been working on it, so yeah, I hope that that continues to be fulfilling. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that um, I've been doing this thing and I think other people will relate to it when you have like body image stuff um, like it's not even like maybe the the best way to describe it is avoidance 
where like I am like I hope you all are aware that I'm pretty comfortable with how my body is um, and that's like definitely what I strive to you know present and what I strive to be and um, like I feel confident like you know a good percentage of the time sometimes I have bad days like everyone does um, and I sort of know my measurements because I do like clothing and you know I want to get stuff that fits and for the most part that works out but I was casting on for this sweater and I was like you know what let me before I just make the biggest size because I was pretty sure that that's what I like the size that I need to knit because I sort of conceptualize my bust measurement as 60 inches. I was like, let me just like take my me measurements. So the thing is for sweaters, a lot of the time, um, the measurement of your like torso, that like round measurement should not be taken at your fullest bust, but should actually be taken sort of up under your armpits. When you're taking your measurement for a sweater, anyone, you don't actually want to measure around the largest point in your bust. What you should do is take it sort of under your armpits because that's going to be the best indication for like all of this area fitting. And then once you sort of knit past like if we're talking top down, of course, once you knit kind of past that point, then you can kind of assess your bust situation and make adjustments for that. So because my bust isn't as big as mo like, like this is the problem when talking about like the straight pattern blocks, like technically I am a D cup for like my size, but I think a lot of patterns sort of assume that my cup size is going to be bigger because I am a bigger person. Like they're just like, oh, you're a big person. That must mean your like boobs are big. Um, but that's not really the case for me. Even like this ready to wear thing, I have kind of extra fabric up here because that's what they're assuming. So after you've done this part and then you get to here, you can kind of assess and if it's like further down in the back, which a lot of the times that's what ends up happening is that the fabric, you know, has to cover more so it sits up, then you can add like a dart, like a wedge of fabric so that the front and the back are even and then as you keep knitting, the hemline will stay even down as opposed to starting to tilt and be like this. Depending on how big your bust size difference is, and since mine isn't that dramatic, um, I sometimes will add that wedge of fabric at the bottom of the sweater, which is not something that I would do while I'm sewing or using, you know, like a woven fabric, but with knitting, um, I have done and I have been fine with that for, you know, what I'm making. If it was more fitted, I don't think I would do that. I would not add the wedge at the bottom, but I digress. So um, I went to take my measurements and this measurement is a bit smaller than my full bust measurement. Um, and I was like, okay, so if I was actually knitting the biggest size, um, which would mean, because because it is a drop shoulder, sorry, <laughs> I, if, if I've lost you, I, I apologize, <laughs> um, but it is a drop shoulder sweater, which means that you want ease, because otherwise it's just gonna, like, you know, the, dr the point of the drop shoulder is that it goes, you know, it's so wide that it sort of falls, and then you do a sleeve off of that. So if it's too tight, then it becomes not a drop shoulder and you just have a bad fitting arm scythe. So um, measuring this top part, I realized that the size that I was knitting would be like way too big from the silhouette that I would want. Um, and I was basing that off of 
my full bust measurement and adding five to seven inches to that, right? Because we want it oversized. So measuring here and then figuring out five to seven inches more actually took me two sizes down to like the third largest size. And, um, you know, it's like, to me, it's not like, I don't, I, I have a really don't put value on like, oh, I don't need to knit the bigger size or anything. It was just sort of an interesting observation that even if I think that I know what size to knit and why, like taking just like that couple of extra seconds to like really do that measurement and be like, okay, why am I knitting this size versus if I knit this size, what would it sort of look like? And that definitely, frustratingly, takes some skill. Um, you know, the first, I don't know, like five sweaters that I knit, I just didn't understand how the yarn that I was using would impact it, how the size that I was choosing would impact it, the difference between ease and fi like final measurements, my body measurements, like how all of that played together. So I feel happy that now that I do focus on making these staples for my clothes, I understand how to adjust them in a way that, you know, makes them fit better. Um, I also did that with the cotton grass jumper by the Petite Knitter. I will insert a link to that video up here, um, you know, where I was able to add some more shaping so that, you know, this wasn't choking me because our neck sort of start further down here than up here. So you have to adjust it somehow so that it's not like cutting you off. So all of, you know, I don't do it perfectly every time, but every time I do it, I learn. And uh, yeah, so this was just sort of a like moment of like, you know, like take a step back. I know you want to cast on and like, what are you aiming for? And are you going to achieve that? Because it takes a long time to knit something. You know that, I know that. And it takes an even longer time if you have to undo the whole thing. <laughs> So anyway, it was just kind of like, like in so many ways, I feel like my relationship with my body is very positive. And then I have moments like that where I'm like, wow, like, you know, that's a little bit dys dysphoric, dysmorphic. I always get those words, dysmorphic, body dysmorphia. Yeah. Um, you know, that I didn't even realize was sort of happening where I was just like, I'm the biggest size. Like, that's the one that I need to knit. And then being like, it would be fine if I was the biggest size. In a lot of cases, I am. And in this particular case, I'm not. And so, you know, take the time to, like, measure yourself out. And I know my weight is definitely fluctuating. Um, it's just, like what happens, especially right now, um, which just the thing that's been happening. So yeah, I don't know. Lesson learned that, uh, you know, just be kind to yourself. I hope I continue to be kind to myself and I hope it helps like talking a little bit more openly about those adjustments, especially as a plus size person. I hope that that, you know, gives you the confidence to be able to make some of those adjustments. So yeah, the other thing that I have been thinking about, and I know I've talked about people with, is like, especially for people with big bellies, like I have, sort of like most sweaters are sort of cut in half. Like if you're knitting like the body portion, it's like cut in half, but my front is actually quite a bit bigger. Like if I were to sort of like bisect myself. Um, and so taking those side panels and sort of moving them back and thinking about adding more fabric to the front to accommodate my belly um, is like another thing that I've been thinking about a lot. So I don't know if that helps you, but um, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of what's going on. That was a very long winded for this little crop top that should be kind of 
an easy project. My friend Zoe out here in Portland, who you might know as Junebug and Darlin, just harvested a ton of plums off of her plum tree, and um, I was able to get about 14 cups of like plum, you know, I like pulled the pit out, washed them off, and uh, froze it all. So I have like right beneath my camera a couple of recipe books. I'm going to be making some plum jam um, as well as a plum pie, which I'm very excited about. So that's kind of what I was talking about, like the bounty <laughs> of the summer, you know? There's a lot of fruit and veg out there. We've been definitely like eating so much zucchini. There's like a zucchini risotto recipe with like lemon and uh, that's just been to die for. So yeah, you know guys, I'm doing pretty good, even though I've had like, you know, there's just a lot of transition going on and there, that's going to come with ebbs of, and flows of inspiration, of motivation, and uh, yeah, I'm just really, really happy that I was able to sit down and talk with you and chat with you about what's going on. And, uh, you know, I'll talk to you soon. I'll be back next week. And, uh, yeah, I think that's it for me. So, we'll talk soon. Okay. Bye.